All right, so today I'm going to start machining the parts for the CNC conversion. I am going to take this uh, three and a quarter inch diameter piece of 4150 and machine it to replace the cross slide. So the tool post will mount to it. It's going to sit on the original Atlas thing and have uh, set screws similar to this to, to lock it on the post. Uh, the tool post will then mount to that and I'll machine some sort of a flat on the side to mount the uh, the bracket that's going to carry the ball nut for the CNC uh, I guess the x-axis there's going to be a plate mounted back here uh, there's two existing bolts where they mount the taper attachment and I believe a, uh, a follow rest mounts back there and I'm gonna mount a plate vertically here with the stepper motor attached to the back of it the ball screw will feed through to a ball nut that will be attached to the side of this so that's the plan I need to leave the the lathe intact long enough to turn this piece up all right so we finished machining on uh, this end of the the adapter We've got the 1 inch 500 hole, a 10 thousandths relief, and then all of the faces have been cleaned up and, and squared up. This piece of brass is precisely uh, 1 inch 500, so I was using that as a gauge pin to make sure that I had the perfect fit. And you can see it's more of like a slip fit. So it is a very tight fit, and there is no wiggle in that whatsoever so it is precisely at the size uh, that I know will fit over top of the post so all right so we've got the cross slide with a finished height from the existing surface of two inches 375 so we want to make this adapter to two inches 375 as well so that when we switch this from automatic to manual uh, all of our tool heights as they're set are going to be uh, are, are still going to be good so it looks like we've got uh, about two inches 700 or so so we got a 250 or so quarter inch to take off of this now i could chuck it in the lathe and face that off but i think it's going to be a lot quicker if i just throw it in the mill here and just uh, mill it down really close then chuck it back in the lathe and clean that surface up so everything's nice and square. Alright, so we've got the adapter turned and ready. We're going to... that goes on there. Now the tool post is going to mount on here roughly like so. And then I plan to machine a flat on the back side with probably four holes and a bracket that will come over to hold the, uh, the ball nut for the screw. May have to machine some clearance on here. I want to keep it up as close as I can. I uh, have to figure out the dimensions. And then once I get that machined, I'll machine in uh, a tap here and a tap there to lock it in place on the post. Alright, the machining on that flat surface for the bracket for the ball nut is done. The next step is going to be to cut the T-slot in here uh, to mount the tool post. I'm going to rough it out with a half inch end mill and then come in with a 5 8 finish mill at about 650 deep.
Alright, so we finished the machining in the first component of the T slot. A slot for that uh, T nut. Uh, that's a 5 8 mil straight back and forth through. However, I've run into a problem. The uh, T slot portion of the cutting, I don't have a cutter. So I am going to make a cutter out of this other 5 8 end mill. So I've got the end mill chucked up in the lathe and I'm using the right angle grinder uh, building this T-slot cutter. I've covered the ways with nice heavy towels and stuff to make sure that none of this stuff gets on there, none of the, the grit or, or the metal. Here is the completed tool post riser with taps and reamed holes for the locking pins that mount it to the post. The uh, threaded holes are completed, the T-slot is completed. The T-slot, I had to break down and buy an actual T-slot cutter to finish the job. I was almost complete when the cutter broke. Uh, I would not try that route again. I do not recommend trying that. It was way more headache than it should have been. A proper cutter is always the right way to go. But that is complete. Now these are the little pins that lock the post riser onto the the table and you can see that there's a slight bit of a curve to the very top of the pin. It's at an angle but also a curve. And I'll show you here in a second why that's important. When they're in the bottom of the compound the post that they're locking onto is actually circular. It's an inch and a half diameter. And if that little pin has a flat angle on it, it'll hit at one very sharp point and end up, over time, causing damage to that post. So by making it slightly curved, everything will touch in more of a, a full contact surface. So. See the curve that's on the pin and how that lines up to the arbor. Why that's kind of important. And here's the completed tool riser with set screws locking it onto the post. Everything assembled and, and in place. I've taken the, the feed screw out so that that slides freely. And it looks pretty good. I think that that will work just fine.